So one of the biggest questions that I get is what are the requirements for building Android? What are the system requirements that I need? What kind of machine can I use? Can I use a machine with this much RAM or with this much processing speed? Uh, what does it take to actually be able to build Android? How long is it going to take to build on this machine? So I get a lot of questions that are pretty much the same question right around there. Um, so I felt it would be uh, good to put together a video that hopefully people can reference later to build. Um, I will caveat this video. As of right now, we're building Android 10 is the latest version of Android. Um, if, uh, if you're looking at this later, that might make more sense. If they have a newer version that requires more uh, oomph to be able to build anything. But... Uh, so that's that's a really big question is that I get all the time is is what system requirements do I need to meet to be able to compile Android for myself? And then with that, some people will also ask what I typically use. So I'm going to show you a little bit of both. Um, the first thing that we need to recognize is what does Google actually say is required to build the Android open source project? What they actually say is the recommended requirements are only two things. You have to have 400 gigabytes of hard drive space and you have to have 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's the only two requirements they make. They make no requirements on the number of CPUs, the number of threads, anything like that. Those are the only two requirements they make and they're just recommendations. They're not hard and set rules. So as we've seen, if you've gone through some of my videos, you can actually build with a little bit less space. Around 250 gigabytes should be plenty for building just one device, uh, one particular custom ROM. Uh, and we have seen how you can use less than 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, for instance, a virtual machine that I was running for the channel to build AOSP 10 uh, only had uh, um, 10 gigabytes of RAM assigned to it and it built just fine uh, and it can build things like uh, Android 9 and down and so forth so one thing I would like to point out is what does it take to build does depend on what you're trying to build if you are building older ROMs lollipop marshmallow nugget uh, you can get by with a lot less hardware I want to show you the first machine that I started building Android on about five years ago uh, was actually this uh, HP Compact. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this machine right here was the machine that I was using to build uh, when I was only building uh, Android Lollipop, Android Marshmallow, and Android Nugget. Now with that, I would specify that I did have a little more RAM. At that time, I had uh, maxed out the RAM on this machine to be 8 gigabytes of RAM. And I do believe I had a bigger hard drive in there. I think I had a uh, 500 gigabyte hard drive that I had slapped in there. Uh, but as you can see, this machine only had uh, an AMD uh, Turion 64X2 mobile technology TL-64 uh, 2.2 gigahertz processor that was dual core. So it had one processor with dual core. So it's running two cores, four threads tops, uh, with eight gigabytes of RAM, about 500 gigabyte hard drive space. And with that, I built and released all of my ROMs for the Samsung Galaxy S4, the Samsung Galaxy S5, the Samsung uh, Galaxy Note Edge. Um, so uh, I went through all of those building Lollipop, Marshmallow, and Nugget on this laptop. So if you're building things that are Nugget and older, you can definitely get by with 8 gigabytes of RAM, and you can definitely get by with a much lower processor. And actually, I'd argue that it really what really starts to compound the problem is actually when you start building for 64-bit phones. So in those cases, uh, only the last one, I believe, was a 64-bit phone. The rest were all 32-bit phone. Uh, and so it really was a lot easier to, uh, to do the builds. Like I was building for some blue phones and some things like that. Where they were only 32-bit. It was pretty, uh, pretty simple 
to do a lot of those builds. Um, at that time, doing a 32-bit build would take anywhere from 8 to 10 hours, and to do a 64-bit build would take anywhere from uh, 12 to 18 hours uh, to complete the entire build process. So typically what I would do is I would do all the work that I wanted to do to set it all up, and then I would literally just, uh, um, you know, uh, start it to run and then go to work, uh, maybe check on it the next day uh, when it was time, when I had time to, to work on it anyhow. So it will take a long time if you have only only a dual core single processor machine. Uh, this is the machine now that I currently use. Uh, you've seen it in a couple of recent videos and right now of course it's building for the uh, SODP project that uh, will be in in some of the videos uh, this machine actually uh, is quite a bit more powerful let's see here get the actual specs for you but it has uh, two CPUs that are eight core apiece And uh, let's see, I can never remember the Xeon number. And this is a Xeon uh, CPU uh, X5570 at um, just under 3 gigahertz. And so, like I said, uh, two CPUs, eight cores each, so 16 cores available. Technically, you can have two threads per core, uh, you know, so you could technically build with like a J32. Um, but uh, so and then as far as RAM we have 24 gigs of RAM on this machine uh, this machine also I have a RAID array of 19 terabytes to store all of the data um, that is really great having all that space actually though it slows it down because I'm using um, you know spinning platter drives instead of SSD and so it is a little bit slower doing the RAID setup because I do have uh, a RAID 6 where it has to write some extra parity bits and things like that for backup purposes but uh, for me I just need the space because I need to build lots of machines uh, at the same time like doing these videos I do lots of different things or uh, even for the phones that I do build for it's nice to have the space to work on different types of ROMs and different uh, different phone platforms as well so uh, lots of space a very handy machine to use um, but you don't need this much to build, all right? Uh, like I said, 400 gigabytes of space is recommended by Google. 16 gigabytes of RAM is recommended by Google. Uh, if I were to give any suggestions to somebody who is looking to imp invest money in a machine for building, the things that I would really recommend is not so much the CPU, uh, you know, most of these modern CPUs, as long as it's uh, dual or quad core, you're gonna you're gonna have plenty of uh, building power, so to speak. Obviously, the more CPUs you have, the faster it's going to be able to compute the compiling and complete faster. But with that, the more CPUs you have, or the more cores, the more threads, the more RAM you need to be able to uh, support all of those threads building at the same time. Uh, I do really recommend uh, solid state uh, drives as far as speed. One of the biggest things that slows you down during the build is actually writing and reading from the drive. So it takes a long time to read from my RAID array because the RAID array is actually in a JBODS that's separate from the build machine. So it actually has to go out and retrieve that almost over a network, so to speak, and then it can start working with it and it starts doing this build. This machine right here, uh, it takes roughly three to five hours to build a um, you know a 64-bit phones ROM uh, but it it does vary a little bit depending what you put in it what you want um, and uh, you know building AOSP is usually a little bit faster unless I add something like if I'm putting open gaps in there and stuff like that it starts having to add more pieces or download anything or to actually uh, you know, compress more into the space, then it, it does start to take more time. So, 
uh, like I said, this machine uh, is probably more than you would really need for day-to-day -day building. Uh, you could get by with a lot less, but the biggest question I get is 8 gigabytes of RAM going to be enough? And usually 8 gigabytes of RAM is not enough. Uh, you can do it. You can do it. You can build the latest version with 8 gigabytes of RAM, but you will run into problems with uh, Jack, with Ninja, and several of the build tools. And uh, I do have some things on my website where I go through some of those problems that I ran into and how you can change the Java heap and stuff like that to give yourself a little bit more space. Um, one of the big questions I get is, well, if I don't have enough RAM, can I just increase swap space? Uh, not really uh yes and no so swap space is kind of like a paging file swap space isn't really ram okay swap space the way that swap works is as your computer sees you working on something uh and then you stop working on that and you work on something else and you need more ram for that something else you're working on it can take the original thing you're working on and write it to the swap space so it can continue working with the space that you have in RAM so it does free up some RAM the problem is that if you are building multiple threads and you try to use swap space to make up for not having enough RAM it still needs everything in RAM to be able to do some function so the swap space is like holding something you're not really using at the moment and it'll draw it back when it does need to use it well so since you're doing multiple threads it'll be keep trying to draw it back and it still won't have enough space to have all of it in there at one time so swap space doesn't really work for compiling something this big okay uh, there are other options out there but it gets kinda complicated and well beyond the scope of this video but uh, hopefully that'll help people uh, with um, choosing their build machines, what they're going to build with. The big thing, personally, I would not recommend building on anything less than 12 gigabytes of RAM. I would really recommend doing the 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's that's the Google requirement of if you're building the latest version. If you're building something Nugget and down, by all means, you can use 8, 10. Uh, gigabytes of RAM and get by just fine um, but uh, it's going to be really difficult you're going to run into a lot of errors and problems with heap sizes and stuff like that when you start building uh, anything um, Oreo, Pi, or 10 related throughout this build process so hopefully that's helpful to you guys kind of give you a, a ballpark an idea of what you uh, need to do if you do have a lower end machine you can always use make dash J and cut the number of threads down even to one you know if you're only building one thread at a time you only need the RAM to support that one thread and that will take a long long time for you to build everything but it uh, you know it will be uh, a good way to utilize a machine that doesn't quite have as much uh, power behind it. So hopefully that was helpful um, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to some more videos in the future.